So the fourth of our beta sprints to be presented, um, John Butler and Wendy Luger will uh, describe government publications, enhanced access and discovery through open linked data and crowdsourcing. Um, I don't know if it's possible for one of the presenters at some point to give us a sentence or two on open linked data. It's been represented many times through the course of the day, but I don't know, um, Wendy, is that something as it's being set up you'd be willing to do? Okay, I was kind of... Uh, Well, we're going to move to um, more of a conceptual model here, uh, very targeted in the area of government publications from content and services point of view. Uh, this is a project, a collaborative project that is uh, being put forth by the University of Minnesota, by the Hathi Trust, and we have representatives from Hathi Trust here in the audience, and by the Committee on uh, Institutional Cooperation, the CIC. And we have Mark Sandler, the executive director of the CIC with us, and my colleague, Wendy Luger. So this, I said, this is a flatter presentation, uh, particularly following the Harvard presentation. Great job, guys. Great, great. Uh, so the idea here is to create a critical mass of content valued and in demand by the user community and build context-sensitive and needed services around it and we do this by proposing innovative and scalable approaches using HathiTrust as a real-life, at-scale testbed. As the larger, largest publisher of information in the world, whoops. as the largest publisher of information in the world, the federal government provides key information resources that encompass all aspects of US, US uh, history and culture. And the development of better access and discovery processes enhance how citizens work with their government. Because the information resides primarily in the realm of the public domain, we see obvious uh, opportunities for exploiting this information. We anticipate that government information will be a significant part of the DPLA. So I'm going to start here with uh, content, uh, the amassing of large-scale content. Uh, we have since 2009. It's a comprehensive approach to amassing these documents uh, using a framework of digitization uh, facilitated by Google and others, the accessing and archiving of this content by Hathi Trust, and uh, corresponding print management strategies uh, bringing together uh, four regional uh, depositories. And just to note that we have the opportunity through the Google work here to share these digital files. The status of this is that we're seeking a potential uh, digitization target of these print documents of 1.5 to 2 million documents. And thus far, we have, we think, in existence 300,000 uh, in Hathi Trust, digitized by CIC, and additional 200,000 plus by other Google partners. We recognize the challenges here of accurate identification of these uh, government publications the sourcing of the documents and their corresponding metadata, and the enhancing of this digital corpus by uh, useful services, and that's largely what this project is about. I want to note, too, that the Hathi Trust held its first constitutional convention this past weekend, or the weekend before, and one of the ballots that passed was the, uh, to initiate a planning process here for a business model and operational plans for the creation of a complete corpus of government publications and new forms of access. So that fits really quite well with this proposal. So moving on to uh, these services, contextualized services around government publications. We've been working with a uh, community of government publication librarians to identify what would be the most valued services, and they really fall into two areas. One is to deal with the problem of US government department and agency name changes as users encounter that confusion and chaos in their searching and navigation. And the second really is to make, provide some sense making in terms of uh, legislative histories. That is, how do we link these documents together in some kind of genealogical fashion? So we propose to use concepts of uh, linked data uh, to deal with both, but primarily with the name agency changes. In this example, you see some of the variants of the U.S. Coast Guard, including the life-saving service, a, a, 
uh, preceding name and the reverse cutter service and onward. So when a user searches for US Coast Guard, are they aware of these variant changes over time? Uh, probably not, and so we're seeking to use linked data and RDF triples that really move us away from a metadata record-based uh, concept in terms of sole uh, search and retrieval to identifying and leveraging the relationships between uh, one data store of bibliographic data and existing external or internal data stores where uh, name authority changes can be, um, uh, that are, are managed. And so there are a growing number of data aware stores out there, uh, including the Library of Congress name authority file, the virtual, inter uh, virtual international uh, international authority file and so forth, WorldCat identities, these are just waiting to be tapped in order to create on-the-fly relationships between documents that and information objects that reside in one place and that of another. And here's a little bit of flow how we might imagine this working with the Hathi Trust, uh, moving from a catalog heading using an RDF triple that tries, that relates uh, one entity object in Hathi Trust or an information point to that where it exists in another data store and returning uh, a related name, a related um, uh, a piece of information uh, based on the request. It could be presented back to the user on the fly. It could also be used to enhance records or enhance uh, queries that the uh, user would be uh, uh, conducting within the search engine. And here's an example of how that might, might actually play out in a user interface, searching for US Coast Guard, a touch to these other data aware services that deal with the variant names preceding uh, and following names, and either by explicit or implicit inclusion of these alternate names could be embedded in the search without the user having awareness of those uh, variations. The other object uh, of our project is to make sense out of legislative histories here, and this is probably the least ugliest slide that I could find. Uh, we hear a lot about sausage, make, sausage making with legislative histories, and uh, it, it really is the, the, the case here. Uh, this is uh, a daunting challenge here as we look at the relationships again, and the key to this project is building relationships between information objects, documents, and such. How do we do that with legislative histories? And here's a simplified version of that. Hard to read here, but again, this, we see this as a combination of algorithmic approaches, clustering of documents based on legislative history, uh, public law numbers, and so forth, and interventions by the professional government publications community as well as uh, possibly end users under certain editorial controls. And those are the interventions there by tagging or perhaps even the creation of these RDF triples by users. And a keyword search that would help us stack these documents up in some kind of, of related history. So uh, just to wrap up here again, we're, we're talking about the continual amassing of government publications content on which we can uh, create, build uh, interesting and useful services. And finally, um, again, this is the, the front slide here. Our proposal was submitted as a uh, short video, and the URL is, is there. I, th I don't know if it's up on the blog site, John. I know we put it up on the wiki site as well, so that's another source for that. Thank you. Excellent, John, thank you. I have a hunch that my friend Carl Malamud would like to say something, so I'm just gonna send the mic in his direction. Uh, I have a question, a uh, wonderful um, data sprint. Uh, you say you're authorized to uh, share those government documents with, uh, uh, with the government, with the FTCIS government printing office. So two questions. One is GPO at all interested in uh, getting access. And can you share those documents with other groups, such as public resource or internet archive or you know, commercial operations or whatever? that's been expressed uh, to that second question uh, and Google's willingness to share with other parties? Really the discussion we had with Google was, was specific to GPO um, and uh, 
you know, I, I guess we could, uh, you know, always go back and, uh, and, and talk about that. I think it would just be, um, you know, what, what's the nature of the, uh, of the vision that, uh, that, that someone wants to, for, for which someone wants to use these documents. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't foreclose it, but our, our specific discussion with them was about GPO. Great, other comments on this? Yes, sir. As the mic goes along, I would say that the GPO would be a wonderful partner in this effort overall as well. I'm not sure if there is someone from the GPO here, but we certainly welcome participation. Thank you. Uh, my name is August Imholtz. I'm uh, a retired vice president of Redex, a digital company, and my responsibility was in government documents. So I just want to comment a little bit on uh, the difficulties that, that, that Mark and his colleagues have alluded to. If you uh, consider that congressional committees are either standing committees or special committees. S the standing committees are fairly long term and seldom more than a hundred of them. Uh, they're not eternal, even though some senators would like to think they are. But the, the special committees are a completely different thing, either spe select committees or special committees. There have been over 6,000 of them in American history so far. And the names of these special or select committees often do not appear on the reports or documents themselves. They'll, s off, they'll have some kind of a name, but it'll be a periphrasis, like the committee of that part of the president's message of the third instant. Now the real name is, is locatable in the House or Senate journal for that session, but it doesn't appear in the document itself. So it's not something that ever could be extracted by full search. It requires research either through cataloging or some other form of intense research to get it straight. So all of this is by way of saying, perhaps too long, that it can be a very, very complicated process. Thank you. Acknowledged. Awesome. Um, I think we're going to um, move on, but uh, any response to this or do we uh, no, just I say yes? I think we, we recognize uh, the complexity of these problems and in, in fact that's what's inspiring us to try to do chip away at it uh, with some scalable methodologies here but fully acknowledged these are very complex uh, uh, information structures if they exist at all. Fantastic team, thank you so much.